Why don't you explain a little bit what an 8-bit sound is, because I don't know what that is. Um, an 8-bit sound is basically anything that comes generated from a computer, especially more of the Nintendo era, like from your Super Mario Brothers and Mega Man sounds. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, what is the connection between 8-bit and like that old Nintendo sound connection? And the connection between them? Yeah. It's the sounds you hear generated for sound effects and music and all that. Kind of like a movie. You okay. know, you need the sound for a movie for your sound effects and music scores. 8-bit does the same thing for their games. Wow, wow. Produce yeah, the, a lot of people don't understand that the, the Nintendo has everything inside the board. And when you buy games back then, everybody thought the game and the graphics and the sounds came from the game. No, it comes from the board. And the game tells it to what's registering, what's putting in, what's taking out, and what graphic does it want, what sounds does it want. Wow. It's a lot different than today's games. It's the other way around. It's what, what you make will come out. But Nintendo, it's like, oh, you just need to tell the Nintendo, this is what I want, and this is what I want to do, and boom. That's, I, I had no idea that's how it happened until just now. That's really, really cool. Does the same thing apply to, like, Game Boys and with like, yeah. Pokemon games? Any, so any cartridge-based games, yes. So the sound is already inside the, the system. And it's, up, you know, it's up to whoever programs it to know what sounds you want to get in there. Like You can actually spend years to, def to figure out what type of pitch of the Pikachu should make. I had inspiration from Crystal Castles, Lady Tron, Computer Her, and 8-Bit Weapon. Yeah. And they, because they do experimental sounds, and I'm like, why should you limit yourself to that? That's what they did. They pushed the envelope and tried to get something new. For me, I'm trying to incorporate the 8-bit and the techno together. But the composer that really got me into is um, Giorgio. Moroder? Moroder yeah. Giorgio. Yeah, the, the guy who actually helped Ed Punk sell a new album. And he said, why music should be limited? It should be whatever you want to make. It should be free range. It should be no restrictions, no limits, or anything. So if you have a song you want to play, and it's not even your genre to do it, just do it. Like why be scheduled to a specific genre? Genre. Like a, a lot of artists branch out of, out of their own world too. Like oh, I never did rap, but I tried it and I did like it a little. Some rappers did a few rock songs, and it was pretty weird. Even Tupac did like a blues song of him, one of his songs. Like he didn't rap, but he got the soul guitar blues playing, and he's just like, let's go with it. Um, I heard you clicked a little. I heard you clicked something. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I used my keyboard, hooked it up to a computer, and I produced the sounds on a, on the program. Any free program, mostly like I use Mixgrab. It's the easiest program to use. Mm -hmm. It's like garage band for PC. That's what it is. Okay. And I did the sounds, I register it, input, then do the same thing for techno drums. I'll click on the same buttons and just try to figure out something out until by the end I'll have a song going. Oh, sweet, sweet. Can you remind me again how you get the Nintendo soundboards uh, mixed in with your music? Well, actually, that's not what I usually do. I usually use the program. There's a free program plugin called Magic Magic 3 Plug, and that implicates the 8-bit sounds in there, and it'll synthesize it, it'll get it close to 8-bit, and then from there you just start playing normally. And then I make it into a CD. After I do that, and when I have to play for a live show, I basically listen to myself, my own CD, mm -hmm. copy it down really close, like really get it down to the Nintendo, and start playing it from there. Gotcha. First gotcha. CDs, then live shows. That's how I do it. I usually play <clears throat> underground stuff, usually at friends' gigs, because they also have like nerd, nerd things going too, mm -hmm. and and there's a genre they do is rap called nerdcore. It's like rap with, with nerd lyrics. It's like a really cool genre, but they bring me up as an opening an opening guest and all yeah. that to get the crowd going. And if they yeah. start off, or I usually play at conventions once in a while. So you were um, just talking about like when you've done a few other projects, but it's different when you play live. Yeah, with live, I actually do have a modded Nintendo. Like I modded it just from creating and making music. Wait a minute, so you're saying that when you play shows, you actually have an Nintendo it's, Yeah, as my, as my instrument, yeah, wow. with how this. Did, wow, man, so how did you 
even begin to know how to mod that? Like, well, at first I, I was skeptical, but I saw things on, online. People before me have done it before, but I wanted to push the envelope. I basically just got my own Nintendo, bought a, a special card they sell for a hundred bucks that you can actually connect your mini keyboard of this caliber or any size to your Nintendo and then play it on, on a TV or a sound system. But for me, I just tweaked it more by adding knobs so I could bend, bend the pitches, raise the pitches, get more distorted sounds and it would get way beyond what it should be doing. So when you play shows, is this all the equipment you need? When you oh, actually in shows, uh, the laptop actually stays home and then the Nintendo comes out. And with the drums, I just have like a simple MP3 player that plays the drums and, and because I know the song so well because I yeah. you know I program the song and I yeah. memorized it like I know where to start playing and all that I just use my little Nintendo to start going at it like start playing it okay. into producing this kind of music I started producing this type of music like around when I was 20 so not that long ago, but I just been hearing it more and more and more because I hear more bands are doing 8-bit music and, and all the underground scenes and the nerd scene too. Like if you go to conventions a lot and you hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the artists you were talking about, are they still... Um, well, why don't you explain to us a little bit about uh, combining techno music and 8-bit sound to produce a new type of... Well, for me, like I usually take bits and pieces of it because I used to DJ and I used to sample DJ. Like yeah, I'll just get a sample and make that into like a beat, like a, sa a drum sample, then a guitar sample from another song, and that. And I incorporated that. Well, like, well, how about if I just do techno drums and percussions, but everything else is still 8-bit. So I have 8-bit melodies, bass, and all that still 8-bit, but the drums and percussions are, dr are just regular techno drums. Maybe you can play something for us and we can talk after a little bit, right? Well, to, yeah. Yeah. to play something right right now? Uh, okay, I guess I can play you one of the songs I just made, like for just for this, for this. Sure, yeah, that would be perfect. What are you wearing on your hand? Why don't you talk oh, to us about that? It's um, the Nintendo Power Glove. Uh -huh. I kind of wear this on stage, like the hat and the gloves I wear it on stage because I kind of have this like joke persona because if you grew up as an 80s kid or a 90s kid, you watch those Saturday morning cartoons that just repeat over and over the same plot and story. Yeah. And there was a cartoon specifically called Captain N, the Game Master. And it was just one of those cheesy Saturday cartoons. And like, why not incorporate that with my music? And, they just make a joke out of it, like, you know. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Oh, no, I don't think that's true. I think it's cool that you kind of pull these little clothing items from, from TV shows and you sort of build your own music persona when you perform. That's that's really awesome. So that means that that glove isn't connected to anything. No, I... Oh, okay, I, it's more, it is more of a prop. It is more, it became a prop now. And to be honest, it was never good to begin with when it used to be used to be able to use on the tech though. Okay. <laughs> oh, so that was like, uh, did that this was the TV? Wii, this was the Wii remote before the Wii remote. <laughs> oh, wow. But okay. just don't try to use it, trust me. That's okay, that's okay. It doesn't register, like, the inputs. Hey, it's, no worries. I mean, but it works for the prop. I yeah, as a prop, so yeah. That's, there you go. What else you'd like to, to share about yourself or your family? Growing up, or about your music that we haven't already talked about. Um, growing up, um, I don't want to give you the same same story. It was trouble and all that. Everybody has that, but it was like the, for me, it was an outcome. It was different. As soon as in high school, I got into a music class, and my teacher just straight up said, "I know you can play the piano, but how about if you try your hands on DJ?" And from DJing, I became knowing how music works and how to count beats. And then from DJing, I got tired of playing other people's music, and I'm like, I want to start making my own. I did that. 
what is your like what do you plan to these few years? Well, for me, I'm my 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 ideal my ideal goal. Like before, like you know, the tragic end comes. I like to say the actual game over. Um, I just want to leave something behind. Like so I want people to remember me for something I did. The music is the outlet for it. It's like I want them to remember this is the guy who did the weird eight bit sounds, and he was cool to hang around with. Like I'm not one of those artists who will look for fame and fortune and all that. I just want. To, to leave an impression on people, and they know I was that type of guy. I was a cool, kickback guy who just wanted just to play music. That's really awesome, Jonathan. Um, yeah, so I think this concludes our oral history session for today. Thank you for coming and, and sharing your equipment and, and sharing your passion behind creating the music. We so appreciate you know getting a piece of the bigger story in addition to you participating in these, in these classes. So, uh, thank you for coming. You're welcome. And I guess at this point, we can end it. Yeah, unless you... No, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Did you play your, your word? Yeah, okay. a small sample of it. But you want me to end it with a song? Let's <laughs> end it with a song. <laughs>